great for Chris Paul, who left the game in the second quarter after jamming his left hand on Russell Westbrook's right leg during the game. Charles Barkley questioned the size of the Clippers championship window. They got to make a decision on Chris Paul and Blake this summer. If they don't win this year, they're never going to win. Because, you know, that's a big commitment with two guys. One guy is not healthy. He's missed a bunch of games. One guy is, 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 is starting on the downside of his career. Do you lock those guys up for the next X amount of years is going to be the big question. I don't do that myself because I'm not paying guys. If they don't win it, you don't, you don't sign them back. I do not. Uh, I, I may sign one, one of them back. I which may, one? Okay, give us which one. I will sign Blake because he's younger. Max, yep. has the Clippers window closed? No, it was never open. It's an illusion. It's a window painted onto a brick wall, and it's nothing against the Clippers. They're an incredibly talented team with a great coach. They even have depth this year. Blake, at times, has played very well, though sometimes you think, hey, get down in the post, toughen up a little bit, but he's injury-prone. CP3, you know, he, he monopolizes the ball too much at times, but... If you talk to a lot of coaches around the NBA and they said, how, and said at least until recently with the way the league's changed, how should a perfect point guard play? They would point to Chris Paul. It's like perfect point guard play. DeAndre's come such a long way, uh, not to sound uh, condescending or patronizing, but having done radio in L.A. and watched him develop, you feel proud of him as far as he's come uh, uh, on, on defense. And even when he has to be the primary offensive option, the way he cleans up around the glass. But they're just not good enough. In a league with LeBron James and Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love, with, with Steph Curry and Kevin Durant and everybody else, and Clay and everybody and Draymond, they're just simply not good enough. And so you got to blow it up. The only way I could say that, and Blake is younger, I agree with, with Charles Barkley, although very injury prone. If you want to move Blake, Stephen A, and you brought up Carmelo with CP3. The only thing I could think is you move Blake to see if you can get Carmelo and something to the Clippers as a lure for LeBron James, who can still opt out of his deals every time he signs a deal, he can opt out. If CP3 and Carmelo are both in LA, maybe that's a lure for LeBron. Otherwise, you got to start moving pieces to rebuild this thing because you will never win a championship with the team as currently constructed. First of all, I would love to see CP3 with somebody like Carmelo who can sit up there and shoot the rock from anywhere and has a legitimate, real, big-time, bona fide point guard. That's number one. Number two, I would, if I had to get rid of one or the other, it would be Blake Griffin, despite the fact that CP3 is four years older at age 31 because CP3, okay, this dude... Is, do you really realize, Max, I looked at his resume. Do you realize that CP3, you talk about James Harden MVP, Kevin Russell Westbrook MVP, we all know how phenomenal they are. They're the two leading candidates for league MVP, both of them averaging over five turnovers a game. Do you realize that CP3 in all his years in the NBA has only had one season where he's had three turnovers a game? What? That's it. The dude with the That's ball incredible. in his hand. I mean, can you, do you that understand really how great of an orchestrator this dude is? Not to mention he's a pit bull. Not to mention he's got heart. Not to mention he's a leader personified. The intangible that he brings to the table cannot be measured. There is no way in hell. The only reason I would trade CP3 before I traded Blake Griffin is because I think I could get more for CP3 than for Blake Griffin. It, but just straight up in terms of who needs to stay and who needs to go for my team, I got an argument I'm for holding up. Now, Blake Griffin, yeah, the injuries and all of that stuff, the dudes always hurt, which frustrates the, the team a lot. But also, the intangible is missing from this guy. Blake Griffin is a star talent. But he is a star who should be a superstar if he had this right here. And I'm not accusing him of being scared or anything like that. I'm talking about a dude that he's on the court and you can see he wants it bad. I agree and with if that. If Blake Griffin had that, Oh, my God. I agree but with that, but I want to get back to CP3. I want to get back to CP3 for a second. He gives us all the sense that that's a championship player. Mm -hmm. He gives us all the – everyone who watches CP3 says, yep, I want that guy. That's the leader of the team. That's the guy who should be on the redeem team. That's the guy who should play with LeBron and all these guys, right? Mm -hmm. That's the guy you want. And yet, he's been on a lot of talented teams, has never gotten very far in the playoffs. Not fair. Wait, Not wait, wait, wait. Fair. Look, Not fair. But, Go ahead. But you talk about the intangibles, right. and I agree. He has that sense about him. But the tangibles, in spite of playing on these talented teams, but, they don't tend to advance. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. CP3, everybody has their game. 
CP3 is not 6'3 and lanky. He's a, he's a miniature pit bull. Sure. He's six feet, stocky, not scared of anything, can put up buckets, but his primary yeah. issue, his primary uh, intent is to distribute the basketball, run the show, be an orchestrator. You have to have the requisite parts around him. And what I'm saying to you is that a Steph Curry who can explode, a Russell Westbrook who can explode, I get you. Yeah, isn't that enough to get to a conference the, the, finals the, the, one time? Let, let me tell you this much. When they lost to Houston, when they got blown out, outscored like 49-9 to right. nine in that game six, I understand that. But what I'm saying to you is this. Did you find yourself asking for Chris Paul to stop the bleeding or Blake Griffin? Chris Paul. I, I'm Blake Griffin. See, that's what I'm saying. He, you 6'10 and a scorer and, 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 and you know you you are Skywalker and suddenly you're grounded like you, like the engine yes. went out but and what, all, I'm, no, but what I'm saying no, what I'm saying no, is Chris no, Paul no. gives you the right feeling Let's, but maybe because you've heard the same thing that everyone like in terms of the locker room stuff there's the younger guys which includes Blake and DeAndre and there's Chris Paul would you say they're in the same camp or different camps listen I get where you're coming from. What I'm saying to you is that you are a point guard. What your skill set is, it is. If the requisite parts are not around you, they're not around you. But especially when they're around you, you're supposed to step up. Blake Griffin has right. got to step up you in that situation. You want to Frankenstein guys. Chris Paul's heart into Blake Griffin? Fine, but you can't. We got to move on. We will discuss Houston, though, with our next guest. Coming up after the break, he needs no introduction. Matthew McConaughey will join the show. Hey, hey. Stephen A. will grill him on what happened to his Redskins. We'll get into it on.